Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at telephones and more specifically the actual wiring, certain things like extensions and whatever, what actually comes into the property and the types of sockets available and how you would connect wires to them. And we're also going to have a look at what this thing is used for. So uh, let's uh, get on with it and have a look at what we've got. Now this, like most other videos on this channel, applies to the UK only. So if you're not in the UK, this does not apply in your particular country. Obviously other countries have telephones and they may be similar, but of course in many ways they may be totally different. So uh, this is basically for the UK only. So the deal in the UK is that uh, there will be a building, which is the uh, telephone exchange. Typically there's one per town or one per area if it's a much larger town. And then you have your house, some distance away usually. And between the telephone exchange and your house will be a cable. And in order for a phone to actually work, you only actually need two wires. So we'll just draw those in from the phone exchange. So there's going to be a cable coming along to your house. And basically it's going to have two conductors contained inside. Now most homes in Britain certainly only have a single phone line. If you want more than one, then all that happens is instead of two wires coming in, you get an extra pair of wires for another phone line. So uh, four would be uh, for two lines and so on. And certainly for businesses, they may have obviously more than one, whatever. But we're just gonna look at the uh, domestic situation here, typically with a single line. Now in the vast majority of the UK, these wires here are owned by a company called OpenReach. In the past, all of this used to be owned by British Telecom, and that was in the days where if you wanted a telephone, you had to contact British Telecom, and they would provide you a telephone at whatever price they cared to charge. There was no option or choice of going to anybody else. And if you didn't like the prices, well, that was just too bad. And if they chose not to supply you for some reason, well, that's just too bad as well. But uh, these days, you can, of course, get telephone service from a whole variety of companies, so plenty of choice. And uh, what's happened here basically is that the wires between the phone exchange and your house are still effectively the same old ones that were there in the British Telecom days. They're just now opened or operated by a company called OpenReach, which is a subsidiary of British Telecom. Some providers actually put their own equipment in the phone exchange now. So if you go, say, you go to Sky or somebody like that, then they may put their own equipment in the exchange and have their own uh, backhaul cabling from there. But the actual two wires from there to your house, it's still owned by OpenReach, so whether you buy your phone service from Sky or TalkTalk or whoever, it's the same manky old cables that have been there for many decades in most cases. Now OpenReach is not a company you would contact directly. If something goes wrong with this part of it, so anything up to where it enters your house, you contact the company that you're paying for your phone service, and then if there is some fault outside, they would then send it on to OpenReach, who would then come around and make repairs and do whatever they need to do. So although it is open reach, so you contact the phone company, they then pass it on to them and they deal with it. Now the only other possibility for most of the UK is a company called Virgin Media. Virgin Media is primarily a cable television operator. They do also provide telephone service as well. And if you're in one of the areas that has cabling for them, which is not the majority of the UK, then you can get a phone socket and service from them and two wires, which look pretty much the same as the open reach ones. The only difference is they're a totally separate network, not involved with OpenReach or the previous British Telecom at all. So if you've got one of those, what's in your house looks pretty much the same in terms of the socket, except the difference is it's from Virgin Media, so you contact Virgin Media in the case of something going wrong with that. But so that only applies in areas that Virgin actually cover, which unfortunately is not the vast majority of the UK. And then the final point is if you live in the whole area, then it's not British Telecom or OpenReach or Virgin Media, it's KCOM which obviously means you're going to have to contact them instead. So that's basically how these things operate. And in terms of the equipment, everything outside your house and up to the socket in your house, you know, including the socket, all of this basically belongs to OpenReach. So anything wrong with that, then it's their responsibility. Anything you attach to the socket, whether it's plugged in the front or whether you have wires coming out of it to other sockets, that is all the responsibility of the property owner. So that's entirely your responsibility if something goes wrong with that. Now the socket in your house, typically referred to as a master socket, there's various styles available. And here's a typical example of one. The idea with these is that the wires coming in from outside go onto the back of that and are connected there by open reach only and you're not supposed to take that piece out. And then there's a piece on the front of the box which you can remove, as we've got shown here, 
and that one is what you can attach your own internal wiring to if you want to have an additional socket in a different room. And when you've actually unplugged this piece, it disconnects all of your internal wiring completely. Therefore, you can just remove that to confirm that the actual line itself coming into the house is working. And you'll see there's actually a socket in the back there where you can just plug in a phone. And if you contact your phone provider and complain that there's a problem, they'll quite often ask you just to remove that part of the box, plug a phone into that socket inside, which they usually call the test socket. And if it works there, but it doesn't work in when all the rest is plugged in, then the fault is with your wiring they're not going to get involved. So uh, that's a fairly typical socket. That is an older style. They're still all very much the same and there's various different designs being made over the years but uh, the concept is the same in that the bottom piece is where you connect your extension wiring in your house and the actual socket itself just has the two wires coming in from outside. Now what comes into your house as we saw there is basically just two wires. However most houses are going to have a cable which actually has four wires inside or basically two pairs and uh, the wires coming in are generally of the colours orange, white, green and black. So here's the uh, black one, here's the green one, and then you may also have, say, the orange and white as well. So there's the orange one, and of course uh, white is invisible, so uh, we can't actually see that. But the idea that those would be contained within a single cable. So it's got your four wires coming in there, and uh, that's what uh, enters the building. Now the first socket on the system, which is almost always the one that's supplied by OpenReach and is the one you're not supposed to take off the wall, that will have uh, the two terminals on the back of that, typically labelled A and B. How very original. And in this case we're going to say it was the green and black that was actually going onto those, mainly because we can't draw white. Could easily be the uh, orange and white, and the other two may not be used. So if you had two lines it would be black and green to one socket, and then the orange and white would just go to another separate socket for the other line. So all that comes into your house is literally just two wires, and if you have uh, internet or ADSL or VDSL or whatever you want to call it, or that service that's laughingly sold as fibre, which of course is fibre to a cabinet far away and then manky or copper to your house, then the internet signal is also carried on these exact same two wires, so it's both the actual phone service here and any internet signals as well. Now this socket here may just be the older style with just the uh, single outlet in the front or some of the new ones actually have two outlets on, one for the internet and one for the phone service but in any case it is just two wires coming in and that's pretty much all there is to it A and B connected on the back there. Now I've got a couple of uh, sockets here, these are not actually uh, BT or OpenReach ones but uh, they'll do for the demonstration purposes here so this is the place you would plug in your telephone both which are exactly the same here. And on the back here we can see that uh, there's a fairly obvious difference between these two. This one here has various components uh, on the back here, and this one over here does not, although it does have the positions for them should they want to be installed. Now the only difference with these is that this is what's called a master socket, and so this is normally one that's put in by OpenReach or whoever, and it's the only difference is it has these three additional components here. If you're going to put extensions in your house after the master socket, then it's going to be one of these, which is basically just the socket part itself. No additional components are included. Now these three components here only uh, say exist on the first one, and essentially what we've got here is this thing here is a surge suppressor. So basically there's a higher voltage on the line, say from a nearby lightning strike or something like that. This conducts and basically clamps the voltage so it doesn't reach a dangerous level. So some kind of protection there against uh, damaging equipment. And then the other things we've got here is a small resistor there and this capacitor. The resistor is really there just so that uh, a test signal can be sent down the two wires from the exchange and then if nothing's actually plugged in this resistor will then show that this socket actually does exist and confirm therefore that the wires that come in are actually connected to something. If the test was done from the exchange and then this didn't show up as anything connected then it would indicate some kind of break in the circuit or a fault. So there for just test purposes. And then we have this capacitor which is there to derive a ring signal from the two wires and that actually comes out on one of the other terminals here so you actually have three wires internally. Now what this looks like in uh, terms of the uh, master socket there is you've got your two wires coming in from outside, which they will call the black and uh, green in this particular case. Between there and here is the uh, 
surge suppressor. Usually it's some kind of gas uh, discharge type tube thing. And all that does is basically conducts if the voltage exceeds a certain level. So it prevents uh, excessive voltages appearing on the line there. Now as these come in, they are called line A and B, as we saw previously. Once they get within the installation, they're not called A and B anymore, they are called numbers, and in the case of this it will be uh, 2 and 5. Now in the case of connecting a modern telephone, most modern telephones, if just connected between 2 and 5, will work perfectly well, and they will still ring and do all the usual things you would expect. So for modern equipment, it's pretty much just the two wires that you would need. However, older phones, and in particular much older ones, including the ones that used to be hardwired in, won't actually ring if those are the only two wires connected. You can still pick up the thing and make a call to somebody, except when someone calls you then it doesn't ring and of course you aren't aware of them actually trying to contact you. So what happens there is that there's another wire, which uh, we'll just draw in the middle in here. This is where the resistor and the capacitor come in. So there's a resistor here, that uh, just connects to the line there, and then the capacitor actually goes between the two like that. And when this comes into the installation, it's set number three. Now values of these, the resistor there is normally 470k ohms, and the capacitor typically be about 1.8 microfarads. Now the capacitor there is basically to derive a ringing signal on this pin 3 here, and that's only used within the installation or basically where your telephone would connect. So older telephones have the three connections there rather than just the two. Now on the two wires here, normally there's a DC voltage, typically around 48 volts, and of course DC won't pass through a capacitor, so in that circumstance there's nothing on the number 3 signal here. However, when the actual phone rings, you get a much higher voltage, typically in the sort of 100, 120 volts range, and that is actually AC. So the AC will pass through the capacitor there and appear on uh, pin 3 here, and then that's the actual ringing signal which is used for older type telephones. And then the resistor, say, is used for a test function from the exchange, so they can basically put an AC signal through the line here, and assuming that the socket is connected, then the AC will pass via the capacitor through that resistor and return, so then they can just confirm that the socket actually exists and something's connected. So if they don't see that, it suggests either the socket's been removed or the wire's broken somewhere, and then there's some kind of fault. So this goes in the master socket. You don't need this in any other sockets because once you've got this additional ring signal on 3, it still exists throughout the rest of the wiring. No point having another master socket there. And in fact, if you put another master socket on, you're basically going to put another one of these across the line, so that may actually cause various problems. Now we can see on the back of this socket, and also at this one, that the terminals are numbered there, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And again on this one here, not uh, quite as obvious, it's rather small, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now if you want to connect to the actual master socket and extend it to the other sockets in your house, which case would be ones like this, then it's just those three wires you need to connect. So 2 and 5, which are in the middle on these, on opposite sides, are the actual line. 3 down here is the ringing signal, so those are the three would normally connect up. 4 is quite often connected as well, just because that you've got a cable with uh, two pairs in, or four wires, and it's just tidy to put uh, number 4 in there. However, terminal 4 is not actually used for any purpose, but it's just obviously a convenient place to put the other wire there. But uh, say modern phones 2 and uh, 5 will just work just fine. Now for putting wiring internally to the building, it's typically going to be something like this. Now this is called two-pair wiring, mainly because it has two pairs of wires inside. And as we saw previously, uh, even just one pair would normally work, but uh, you can't generally buy one pair wiring, so two-pair is what you will get. Now these uh, have two colours in, primarily blue and orange. And we can see here that we've got the blue, which has white marks along it there. And then we have the orange with white marks along as well. And the corresponding pair, of course, is the basically the opposite of that. So blue with white goes with white with the blue marks. And then, of course, orange and white goes with the white with orange marks. And if you have a look inside the actual cable here, just pull some of that back, you can see that they are actually twisted in a fairly uh, loose arrangement there. And that's basically to uh, 
reduce uh, interference from the adjoining pair. So uh, those are your sort of standard colours there. Now in theory inside you can actually use whichever colours you want, it doesn't uh, hugely matter as long as they're connected the same at both ends. However generally the blue pair is what's used for the line which is 2 and 5, and then the orange pair would be used for the ring signal, which is always just terminal 3, and of course optionally 4 just to put the extra wire in place. Now you can buy three pair wire, the other pair is green, and again correspondingly with the white with green bits on it, that would be used for terminals 1 and 6. However, for any domestic or normal telephone service, 1 and 6 are never used, and mainly because that no phone actually needs them. And in fact, if you look at the plug on most phones, it doesn't even have any contacts for 1 and 6 either. So although you can buy 3-pair wiring, it's never actually used for anything. It's only value maybe if you want to, say, put an additional line through to a different room or something. But uh, so that's a fairly unlikely scenario, certainly these days with cordless phones and whatever. Now in terms of connecting the wiring to the sockets, there's a couple of options. This is a nasty cheap one here and it has actually got screw terminals, so uh, you can just loosen the screws and shove the wire in and tighten down. Now I wouldn't recommend uh, getting one of those because uh, screw terminals can be somewhat unreliable, particularly in the days of using the same wiring for the internet. Here's a much older socket, this has actually got the old uh, BT logo on there, and uh, this was used for an extension in a house. Now this is again a secondary socket, doesn't have the additional components for the master. And in terms of connecting it, then you need one of these. You can also buy cheap plastic versions of these which are good for one use only. But uh, these types of things basically presses the wire down in there and also trims it off. Now the uh, general colour coding for this is to say the blue and white is actually the line pair. So uh, that's what goes to the connections 2 and 5. So number 2 is the blue with the white, so it comes in from the middle there, place it in the terminal, and then the tool just goes over the top of that, presses down, that actually cuts off the wire, so any spare, and see it also pushes that wire down into the connector, and you can see it's been pressed right down to the bottom of the slot there, and what's inside here is basically some uh, cutting jaws there which slice through the insulation and make contact with the solid copper inner core but of course don't actually cut right through the wire. And then the corresponding other pair of that, the white with blue, that just goes in the terminal 5 over that side and that's it basically done. So that would be pretty much enough for any modern telephone. If it's an older style you would need to also connect the orange pair as well and in that case it's the orange which goes to pin 3 over here so again, just place that in there, tool over the top, cuts off, and then uh, the other one, you can just leave it loose in the box, but uh, generally it was put in to uh, number four there, and then the tool just places over, trims that away. So that would pretty much be the uh, actual connection method there, so blue and orange this side, and then the corresponding white with blue and white with orange over there. And so terminal 1 and 6 would be for the green pair, but so that's rarely used in anything at all. Now I've done this long here just for this demonstration. What you're supposed to do is to put the actual white covering up in the middle, and then in the bottom there there's a hole you can put a little cable tie through just to secure that in position. But uh, so this is just a demonstration, so it doesn't particularly matter. Now this cable is the same uh, size and specification. It's the same solid core there. This time to have a black covering so it might be more use for use outside as it's less likely to be damaged by UV from the sun. Uh, this has uh, coloured cores inside which in this case are orange, blue, green and brown. This is similar to what you might have coming into the house from outside, although I would say this can be used for internal use as well. So same idea there, just that these happen to have a different colour contained inside. Now there may be circumstances where you want to join two wires together, or in some cases say you've got three and you want to uh, join those together in a single point now. Don't be tempted to use things like screw connectors or whatever because they simply won't work, or they work for a while and then become unreliable later on, which will cause uh, things not to work properly, and certainly in terms of if there's any internet service on the thing, that can basically destroy it completely. So uh, what you use are these things. Now, these are called jelly crimps, or just jellies, or various other names. What they are basically is a piece of plastic, and in the top here is a metal piece there, so you don't just that piece across the middle. 
wires go in the outside here and then you basically crimp this down with the appropriate tool and then it presses down onto the insulation and actually cuts through the insulation makes contact with the wires inside very similar to the uh, things on the back of the sockets there and these uh, the gel part is from the fact that these have a gel inside so once it's crimped down the gel actually fills the whole space inside and generally a bit oozes out and that makes these waterproof so they can be used say outside or in damp locations such as a cupboard outside or whatever now this one has uh, three holes in the end for joining three wires and then the ones here only have two so again that would be for just two wires now the tool for putting these in is this thing which is basically got a cutter here so you can just trim the ends of the wires as needed so you can just obviously trim that off there like that and then the end here is for actually crimping these down so you would essentially place it over there press down and the gap here is so that you don't actually crush this too hard because if you squeeze it too hard it could be damaged and not make a proper contact so that's uh, basically why you've got that gap across the end. Now you could just use ordinary pliers, I mean that would probably work in most cases, but these just ensure you're not going to sort of overdo it. Now in terms of actually using these, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Just take the two wires you wish to join together. You don't have to strip them or do anything with them. Just place the two wires into the holes of the connector there. Make sure they're pressed in fully, and if you have a look on the back, you can actually see the wires, they should extend right up to the end of the plastic there so all the way as far as possible and then just take the tool and just place it over the top there make sure the wire is still pressed in and then it's just a question of press down you can see that gel has now flowed to the end there and it's now uh, oozing out the end so the button on the top is now flush and those wires are now properly secured in there and they'll now be electrically connected through that piece of metal which has now crimped down onto the wires and that's pretty much it so uh, very simple and straightforward and say so this is basically permanent and now is waterproof as well so if any moisture gets in not going to cause a problem the uh, three-way one is exactly the same if you want to say join three wires together this might be where you've got an existing uh, cable there you want to make sort of a tap off onto an additional socket or whatever so again it's the same deal just put the three wires into the three holes making sure on the back you've inserted them fully so they all go basically right through to the end there. Same tool as before, just place it over the thing like that, crimp down, you can see the sort of gel material flow inside and again that's uh, pretty much it. So now all three of those are connected together and you can see the sort of gel there just oozing out of the end, disgusting horrible material and as you see they're securely fixed in there not going to be uh, coming out of that at any time and again fully waterproof as the gel covers over the entire thing and these also have the cut of it so you can uh, obviously cut them off if you made a horrible mistake and didn't in fact want to uh, join those at all because they once these are joined on you can't reuse them it's basically cut it off and start again so that's the uh, basic telephone arrangement two wires in two wires inside the installation optionally that third wire if it's an older one which requires that for ringing but say most modern phones don't actually need that so in many cases you can just put the two wires through that works fine so how does the internet fit in with this if you've got uh, internet service on the same thing well it's the same exact two wires all that happens is that the internet connects to those two wires so say number two and number five like that now because the uh, phone coming in obviously could interfere with the internet signals, the internet signals are much higher frequency than you would normally have on the phone for either the speech circuit or whatever else. So what you actually have across the line here is essentially a filter. So the two wires in and then you have your two wires going out here. On this side of the filter this is where your modem would be connected. This is where your internet service would be. This filter basically blocks any low frequency signals, so including things like uh, people speaking or someone just picking up the uh, receiver. And of course any ringing signals coming through are also blocked as well. So high frequency signals can get straight through and that's what the modem is looking for. Anything of low frequency is completely blocked or at least uh, mostly blocked at that point. So it's the exact same two wires, it's just the presence of a filter here 
If you plugged it in without the filter it would probably work, at least some of the time, but the problem is as soon as the phone rang or someone picked up the receiver and started talking it's going to have a load of interference going through to this and you're going to get it sort of disconnecting and having all kinds of problems. So just a simple filter in there that uh, filters away any of the low frequencies that aren't required. Now this filter can be built into the master socket which is provided by OpenReach and in those cases you'll have two sockets on the front there, one for the phone and then the other one just for the internet modem. Here's a typical example of that. Again this is just one of several varieties that have been in existence but again the principle is the same. Same two wires, it's just the modem socket which is smaller has that additional filter on it. And if you don't have one of those then the other thing which was uh, certainly popular at one time were things like these. So this just plugs in your normal phone socket and on the back here we've got one for your telephone and then the modem connects into this one. As it says here this was for a Sky installation so that's where your Sky hub goes and that's where your phone would go. And there's nothing uh, particularly in these, it's just a passive filter, no power required. It just uh, ensures that low frequencies go to the phone, high frequencies go to the modem outlet. Let's take off the lid here, we'll see what we've got. So this is the incoming uh, point here, this is actually a removable plug there. And this is just basically a passive filter. All we've got on here is a uh, couple of capacitors there, some inductors, and it's just basically filtering out any high frequency items so that uh, high frequencies only go to this one, all the rest just goes to this one here. So it doesn't require any power, nothing magical or whatever in there, so literally just a few inductors, a couple of resistors and a couple of capacitors. So very straightforward things, just all mounted on the circuit board there, there's the uh, sort of diagram on the back there, but again pretty uh, straightforward stuff. And so you can either buy this separately like this or you can get the sockets built in or various combinations of. Now if you're going to have phone extensions in your house, if you're just going to take these wires through to all the extensions then you would need to put a filter, typically one of these, at every single point in the installation where you've got an extension socket because of course someone could plug in a phone anywhere. The better way is to have the filter built into the master socket and then all of the wiring from that can actually be after the filter so that the modem actually just fits in this position here, other lines therefore don't affect it. So in this case this will be part of the actual master socket and your extensions would actually connect at this point here. So the modem is always on the filtered side, whatever's going over here isn't actually going to affect it. However these days most people have cordless phones so the need for extensions elsewhere in the building is generally not something that's needed these days. And the other thing to be careful of is that if this third wire is actually installed throughout the rest of the installation this can actually cause problems for the internet as well because it's only a single wire if it goes all over the house into various different rooms it's basically going to act as a big antenna or pick up all kinds of interference and although it's not directly connected to the two wires of course it is connected there via that resistor and the capacitor so it's basically a big wire picking up interference shoving that back onto the line of course that can cause problems with the internet so in those cases it's probably a good idea to uh, disconnect that at the master socket and not bother. I'd say most modern phones will work fine without it. And there was at one time a thing you could get called an IE plate or an accelerator plate which basically went in the master socket between various parts of it and leisurely was some kind of magical device which uh, improved the internet speed massively but uh, in reality all it did was stick an extra filter on this particular wire or in some cases just disconnected it completely and no doubt it was sold at fairly high prices and didn't actually contain very much. Now if you're going to be installing or at least doing anything with telephone extension it's a good idea to get a basic telephone such as this one with uh, a general uh, plug on the end of that. I'd suggest avoiding cordless things because of course they rely on things like batteries and a lot of other bother. But just get a hard wired phone like this. This is just some cheap uh, BT branded piece of junk here. Basic uh, end there and then just your thing to plug into the socket to at least confirm that the thing is working. So just get one of those things there and if you have a look at the plug here this is the standard uh, deal as used in the UK. You see that it has room for six contacts in the end but you'll notice there's only four of those are actually used and in reality it only actually needs two of those. I say one and six on the outer edges aren't even populated. Two and five of course for the actual uh, signal there and then optionally three for the ring. Four isn't used either so that only has the four in it and you'll find that's the case on pretty much all telephones. And have a look at this uh, filter here, the, uh, the Sky one. 
This is what goes in the main socket, and you can see that one doesn't even have all four in there. It's only got two and five in it, so if you were going to use this with a manky old phone, you'd probably find that putting this filter in and the phone didn't ring at the other end. So again, just the two wires there. And uh, coming out here, you can see the plug there actually does have all four included in there. The internet one is a slightly different style of connector, but again, it just has the two wires there. doesn't need anything else. It's literally just the two wires A and B going through to that. So basic phone there. Generally, you want to plug this in. Make sure that there is actually a dial tone there. Make sure you can actually call somebody and it does ring at the other end. And generally, you can make sure that then if people are calling you, it is actually going to ring as well. And say, so get a uh, cheap uh, wired one for this because it's a, just a lot easier than faffing about with uh, cordless phones or whatever. And particularly if it's a customer's house, so you don't really want to be using their phone for it because their phone might not even be working or maybe configured in some weird way or have all kinds of problems. Now there is a test number you can use on these, and on most lines it's 17070, and if that function is enabled, it will generally give you a recorded message with a menu with various options to uh, test, such as uh, calling you back and whatever else. Some lines don't have that enabled, it depends who they're from, and also if it's from different providers you may find the message at the end is slightly different, but that can be useful for some basic testing as well, but uh, that's not always installed on uh, quite a few lines anyway. So. Something worth knowing, but as I say, don't be surprised if it's not there or doesn't have the options you may have expected. So let's look there at telephone wiring and certainly how it works in the UK. Now, if you've got the internet, and let's face it, most people probably will have, that does come on those two same wires. So in the situation of that, it's not particularly desirable to have extra extension things pulled all over your house. Because, of course, bearing in mind, those extra wires are all connected to the same two that come in. And if they pick up any interference or got loose connections or whatever else, any noise they're going to introduce is going to degrade the internet signal considerably. So the ideal scenario is to just have the master socket as provided by the telephone supplier, nothing else connected to it at all, and then just plug in the front of it your telephone and your internet modem. And if you want additional phones throughout the house, just get some cordless ones, plug the base station into the master socket and stick the others wherever you want. And if you are going to put extensions through the house, you're either going to have to put a filter on every single socket or you're going to have to put the filter in the master socket and then have the filtered wiring coming off of that for the extensions. But as I say, these days most people have the cordless phone, so extension wiring is something a thing of the past. Now, if you're in a Virgin Media area and you're using the Virgin Media cabling, then the situation of the internet is slightly different. On those, the telephone wires that come in are just for the telephone service and nothing else, so no internet provided with those and you don't need any filters or whatever. And if you get your internet from Virgin Media, that is actually supplied on a coaxial cable, and it's the same coaxial cable that's used for the television service as well. So in those ones, the internet is totally separate and unrelated. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.